This is a paper model of a three-dimensional shape of a protein. You will be creating it. First, we will start with the sheet of paper. Uh, the name of this fold is called the Rossman fold, and it requires, um, it's, it's a partial chain from amino acid number 195 all the way through 224. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this document and then we will get started. If you take a look, you will see amino acids 195, 196, 197. And if you look really close, you will also see the single letter code for them. Here is a C and an A and a B and an F and a G, and these should have meaning to you, okay? So C for cytosine, perhaps you remember F is phenylalanine, or phenylalanine, sorry. Um, so let's go ahead and get started by cutting out this first strip of amino acids. There is red dotted lines right here that indicate where to cut. So everywhere you see a red dotted line, you will cut. I'm just going to start over here and we'll cut on the red dotted line. Now, as you cut this, you should be observing the chemical structures of the amino acids. You should, oh, we've come across another little dashed line here, a red dashed line that says cut. So keep in mind, anytime you see a red line, you will cut that. I'm going to skip that for now, but I will definitely come back to it. And we're just going to continue cutting. This is interesting. When you get to the end, you should notice it's kind of gray shaded, and this means you're going to be gluing. You're going to be put glue on this. So that is a key as well. Turning it around, and we're just going to finish cutting the first strip out. And this is what your first string of amino acids should look like. Here's that gray area. So what you're going to do, you see this dark blue line right here. Every time you see a dark blue line, you're going to do something called a mountain fold. And so you will fold it like a mountain. So this is going to be the peak of the mountain. And there you go. See, this is like a mountain. There's what it looks like. You've made your fold, your mountain fold. And now you're going to glue, turn it over, glue the end over. Just right on the mountain fold, and it should fit nicely. There you go. Now you only have one 201, but it's cool because it's on both sides. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and cut out the second chain from your paper so we can properly put chain one onto chain two. So I'm gonna move chain one out of the way and chain two is a big long chain. Let's go ahead and cut that out. So this chain starts with amino acid 201, which is interesting because that's the amino acid we just ended with. So I think you can see we're going to adhere the 201 amino acid from chain one to the 201 place on chain two so we can have a nice connection. Okay. So now you should have chain two, which is very long, and chain one, which is shorter. And I'm gonna zoom up here so we can see both. Here we go. So before we attach them, don't forget the little red dash means cut. So there's a cut right here at amino acid 200. So let's just give that a nice little cut on the red line. And there's also a little cut area here 
on 201 where you folded the end over cut there okay so now if you look at this you have a 201 on the second strand and a 201 in the first strand so you're simply going to turn this over remember i said the gray area means glue and look at this when you turn it over you can see the shapes line up beautifully so you're going to glue the gray area and then you will line up the second strand over top the first notice the first strands upside down because that's where the glue area is there you go so now you have properly attached strand one to strand two and it should look like this okay i'm gonna zoom up and you can see i had to kind of put it at a diagonal because it's a big long chain strand one to strand two again you might want to just double check we're starting at 195 through 201 and then 201 to 212. Strip one is now glued to strip two. So I'm just going to move this aside and cut out strip three. So it ends with 212. This one starts with 212. So let's cut this out and attach properly. Again, just go to the red lines. This one's pretty simple. Oh, notice there's a cut mark there at 214. gray you know what gray means we're gonna do some gluing and another cut right here after we glue okay so we'll have to make sure we do that and good two twelve 212 at the end of strip two requires some glue. Two twelve to two twelve. It should fit perfectly. And then while we're here, let's not forget there's a red mark right here at 214. So make your cut. And there is another one over here. There it is, right at 216. I'm going to make a cut right there. Okay, and you can see the gray area. So we know we're going to put some glue eventually at the end of strip three. So now we should have strip two and strip three glued together. Our amino acid chain is getting pretty long, but we have one more set of amino acids, the fourth strip, 217 through 224. So just like before, let's cut it out and then we'll see how we're supposed to glue it to strip three. Let's follow the red dotted line. Very good. Now you'll notice there's a couple items on the side of the paper besides amino acids. Don't lose those. We're going to need those for later. So there we go. 217 to 224. Let's bring in strip, the end of strip three. Here we go. 216 is here. 217 needs to go and again we need to match this up so let's just look at this this is going to be glued but notice it goes at a slight angle so the double bonded o and the n all should line up and you'll glue it like that okay so go ahead and get your glue add it to amino acid 216 again there should be a little cut there 
And then let's line up 217 properly. There you go. We now have the primary structure. And that's the just the chain of amino acids starting at 195. Keep going, keep going all the way through to 224. Once you have the entire primary structure, all four strips glued together, you're then going to start folding. So I'm going to turn this over. Notice there are dashed blue lines and solid blue lines. The dashed ones make valleys. So that's new. So you're going to fold it like this. Okay, give a nice crease. So that's a valley. And then the blue, solid blue, you're already familiar with, that one makes the mountain. So you're going to fold it like the peak to get the peak of the mountain. Okay, so valley folds looks like this, and mountains look like this. Ah, let's keep going. So next one is a valley. So again, you're going to fold the so that the line is at the bottom of the valley. A nice little pinch. And then you will move on to 198. Looks like a mountain fold. So you're going to make it so the blue line is the peak of the mountain. And then you just keep going. So next one's a mountain. Be careful. So two mountains in a row. There's a little cut here. And then notice a valley. So it's going to turn this whole thing. Interesting. Okay, and there's a cut here, mountain. So we're gonna kind of, that whole strip kind of goes like away from us. And now we're gonna go and flip it over. And now what we're gonna do is just keep going. So this is gonna be interesting because it's a whole series of mountains. So we're gonna do mountain. There's a little glue there, so it makes it a little more firm. And try to get your fingers out from under it. It's a little difficult, but line it up and then kind of pinch it. And then the next mountain. And then what you're going to notice is it's going to kind of start to spin around on itself slowly, make a spiral. And that spiral has a name. Called an alpha helix, and we're just going to make one right now by doing a series of mountain folds all in a row. So I'm, now I'm at 208, and you're just going to continue the mountain folds, and it should start to kind of go there. You can see, you can see it really nicely in that view. So it's starting to make a spiral, an alpha helix. Keep going, keep going. 214, there's a little cut there. Ah, and now we have a valley fold, right? A 215, so it's gonna give us a little change of direction with that. So fold that down like the valley, right? So this is the valley fold. See it maybe a bit better this way. And then it looks like we're right back to a mountain fold. There's a cut there. And another mountain fold. And one more mountain fold. And then I think we have another valley. There we go. I'm at 218. Okay. And now a valley fold. So make that the bottom of the valley. And then the peak of the mountain at 220. Valley. Mountain at 222. And end with a valley fold. Okay, so this is what it should look like. 
You should have a very interesting looking spiral of the helix in the center. I might even go more. Let me see, maybe one more. Let's see. And then you should have your two. Um, here we go. It goes like this. And then it should have the two other sheets. Okay. So good luck with the folding. We need to solidify some of these bonds. So what we're going to do is we're going to make some tape strips to use as hydrogen bonds. So you're going to go ahead and get yourself a few strips and then we're going to cut these strips even smaller. Here are the big strips of tape and you want to make very, very small strips. You're going to use just the ends of your scissors and you're going to make one, two, three cuts. And then you should get a strip about this size. Try to get as many of these as possible. This might be the trickiest part of the entire project. One, two, three. And I'll cut this off. So you should get about four little strips from each big piece of tape. You probably want about 12 to 14 of these for the next part. You should have a lot of these little strips of tape and now we're going to put them to work. This is going to uh, serve as a hydrogen bond connection. So let's find out where we're supposed to put this. If you look at your alpha helix and if you go to amino acid 201, do you see the little one at the top of the oxygen? And then if you give that a little twist, you should find a one at the hydrogen for amino acid 204. So oxygen, hydrogen, one to one, that's where you're going to put a little piece of tape. That's the hydrogen bond. So you grab your little piece of tape and you seal the bond right there. Okay. And then you turn it a little. And now you have oxygen and hydrogen two to two. So take your little piece of tape and make the bond right there. And then you keep going. Oops, mine came apart. That happens sometimes. Just put it back together. There you go. Okay. And then three to three, little piece of tape. And then give it another little twist and line up the oxygen for so I mean amino acid 204 amino acid 207 hydrogen bond little piece of tape and then you just keep going come on tape stick if your fingers too big you might just want to use a pencil go five to five keep going 
Oops, my two is separated down here. Let's put you back together. Six to six. Seven to seven. Eight to eight. Nine to nine. Not enough on the hydrogen. And there are 10 total. So 214. Ten to ten. Hydrogen bond. Oh, I just want to stick to my finger, not the paper. Oh, there it is. And that's it. That gives you your official alpha helix. Make sure you reinforce any of the bonds that might have popped off. And there you go. I got some more tape to this one. The four doesn't want to stick. There we go. Okay. Once you have your alpha helix done, now you're ready to make the beta sheet. So this requires a little bit of looking around. You want to start by making sure you have amino acids 217 through 224 as the top strand of the sheet. And then the bottom strand will be amino acids 195 through to uh, 200. Okay, so I'm going to line this up and show you again. This is how they need to line up. Now, the reason they need to line up like this, and I'll zoom in, is you're going to continue making your bonds. So we already made our alpha helix bonds by bonding one to one, two to two, three to three, so on. This is a little different in how you're going to tape it because you want to line up not the atoms necessarily, not the oxygen and hydrogen atoms, but you're going to line up the numbers. It's a little off from uh, the, the, what you did earlier with the atoms. So there's 11 and 11. So again, this is amino acid 119 should be on the bottom. Or I'm sorry, 195 should be on the bottom and 219 should be on top. So again, I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I hope that makes sense. And then we're going to line up 11 with 11. And that's where we're going to tape 11 to 11. Okay. So that's where you want to tape. And then we're going to move on down the sheet. 12 should line up with 12. We'll put a little piece of tape by the two 12s connect those and then move down a little bit more there's going to be a bond here between the 13s and then the 14 that's why having all that tape ready to go is so handy and then the 15 should line up. 
and you will tape those together. Okay, and that just kind of sticks out. That's the end, 224 should be the end. And now I'll zoom out a little bit to show you what your structure should look like in the end. Better view. There it is. So we have the alpha helix and the beta sheet. And there's a little space in between. So the next part will be to stabilize these two. Here's what your structure should look like. You have your alpha helix and your beta sheet. And you'll notice again, there's a space in between and there's actually bonds that are formed that will help stabilize this. The first bond that we're gonna to use to stabilize it is one that I hope you recognize. It's going to be a disulfide bond. Um, so it's gonna go from cysteine to cysteine and make that um, cross-link. Again, you're just going to cut where the red dots say to cut. And this is kind of interesting because we're going to make some flaps now. You can already see we're going to have some gluing to do because of the gray shaded area. Okay, so now we need to cut little flaps. And that's what this little area is right here that says cut. So I'm going to do a little better job of trimming that up. There's a red dash line right here, and you will simply make a nice cut right there. And then that will allow you to make a flap by folding, mountain fold, right? And another mountain fold over here so that we have two triangular flaps. Mine needs to be folded better. There you go. Two triangular flaps. So you will you will apply glue here eventually once you find out where to put it. And you're also going to do another mountain fold, right? And you will apply glue here once we figure out where to put it. So we're looking for amino acid 196 and um, 211. So let's find that on our model. So 211, there's 210, we're on the alpha helix, and here's 211. And if you look very closely, there's a little green triangular uh, shape right here. That's where one flap goes, and that's where the other one goes. So let's look at that. Here's 211, there's the two flaps that you made, and they fit right here, okay? And so I'm gonna turn on the other end so you can see, there's the flap you're going to glue here and then you'll glue the flap on the other side over here. Okay, so it fits like this. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. I think that's probably easier if we just get that glued in and then we can find out where the other end goes. So I'm going to go ahead and glue this as well, because you know that's what's going to happen. So we're going to go ahead and glue this 196. So this is going to go from cysteine to cysteine. So 211 is a cysteine amino acid, and 196 must be as well. So again, there's the 211, and we're just going to sit it right on those flaps. And with a little pressure, you should be able to adhere that. I'm going to go inside the helix, press it a little bit. Here we go. Okay, so now we have the cysteine with the sulfur. And now we need to go to the beta sheet. Oh, there's 196. Cysteine. 
And so you are going to line it up 196 with 196. Just like so. Okay, there you go. And 195 is right on the other side of it, right? Or maybe 195 is Sistine. Yeah, I think one, 195. Yes, 195 is Sistine with the sulfur to the 211 Sistine with the sulfur. And now you have one really nice stabilizing force. And now you have a nice stabilizing force between the alpha helix on one side and the beta sheet on the other. If you've made this far, congratulations. That's a great job making that disulfide bond. There is one other bond that I'd like for you to try to make. And that one um, is hydrophobic interaction. So hydrophobic means water fearing. Some of these amino acids don't like to be near water. So when you plop this whole thing in water, it some of the amino acids try to hide. So let's go ahead and cut this out. Uh, the last interaction is the hydrophobic. Again, you're just going to cut around the red dashed lines. And of course, you can see where there's going to be some folding and some gluing. Ah, look at this. This is a fancy, fancy set of flaps here. And looks like, again, so you can tell we're going to be looking for amino acids. 207, 208, and 197. Those are the hydrophobic ones. Okay. I'm going to do the best job cutting there. I'll turn that back up. Okay. So the flaps for this one, it's kind of tricky. Make sure you're going to go cut, cut, and then you're going to cut across here to make two flaps. So here, I'll show you. Cut. Cut. And then you're going to go ahead, that little piece can fall out because you're going to go one and then you're going to cut the other direction. And there you go. Now we have two flaps. I'm going to fold those back because it's a mountain fold, right? And then this one back. And there you go. Now we have the flaps and they will fit into amino acids 208 and 207. And then of course, glue over here for when we find 197. So let's see where this is on our model. So 207, aha, looky there, 207. And there is a small little kind of a rectangle for one flap. And if we roll it over, 208 has something similar. So you're going to fit that in right like that with the glue. Okay, 207 and 208. And then, of course, over here, I bet we'll find, uh-huh, 197. So let's go ahead and do the mountain fold for this and do our gluing so that we can put it all together. All right, I have my glue. I know where I'm going to put these. So let's bring this over. And 207. Goes right here. 
right there. A little bit of pressure. And on the other side, 208. A little bit of pressure. That lines up. And there we go. So it kind of looks like a little tabletop. Okay, 207 and 208. And now we're looking for 197. I'm going to line 190, or sorry, 198 next to it. 198, and we'll glue 198 to 198. So that 197 is on the inside. So 207 is inside, 197 is inside, and if you go over here, 208 is inside. So now we have two supports for our protein. We have the disulfide bond, Let's zoom in a little bit, there we go. The disulfide crosslink, a hydrophobic interaction, and now your final protein is complete.